In this video, we are going to talk about carbohydrate metabolism and glycolysis. Carbohydrate is a part of our food and it is the main source of energy for us. The foods such as bread, rice, noodles, these are rich in carbohydrate. The long chain carbohydrates are broken down in our digestive system by the digestive enzymes and the monomers of the carbohydrates are mainly glucose, galactose and fructose. After breaking down, the monomers gets absorbed in the bloodstream and this absorption occurs due to some transporters that are present in the cells of the digestive tract. And these transporters are GLUT transporters and SGLT transporters. Through these transporters, the glucose, galactose and fructose are absorbed in the bloodstream. But the absorbed nutrients are not directly sent to the heart. They go through another type of circulatory system which is called hepatic portal system. In this system, the blood which is having the nutrients from the digestive system will go to the liver first. Then the liver will decide how much nutrients needs to be sent to the body. So after that processing in the liver, the blood is sent to the heart and then the heart gets the blood oxygenated through the lungs and then it will send the nutrient rich blood to all the cells of our body so that all the cells of our body can use the nutrients to make energy. The cells of different regions of our body also have some transporters to receive the glucose or the other type of carbohydrates. So through these transporters, glucose gets into the cell and there are some enzymes present in the cell which can break down glucose and make energy or ATP out of it. And the first pathway of making energy or ATP from glucose is glycolysis. In the first step of glycolysis, one ATP molecule is used or consumed. One ATP molecule contains three phosphate groups. Among these three phosphate group, one phosphate gets attached to the glucose in this first step and the ATP becomes ADP and the enzyme used is hexokinase and after attaching one phosphate group to the glucose, it becomes glucose 6-phosphate. In the next step, the isomerization happens. The glucose 6-phosphate isomerized to fructose 6-phosphate and the enzyme used is phosphoglucose isomerase. In the next step, one more phosphate group will be attached to the 6-carbon molecule fructose 6-phosphate and here the enzyme is phosphofructokinase. Kinase enzymes are responsible for deletion or insertion of phosphate groups. So now, Two phosphates are present in this molecule and this is the fructose 1,6-bisphosphate because it is a fructose molecule having two phosphates. That's why bisphosphate. In the next step, the 6-carbon molecule fructose 1,6-bisphosphate will be broken down into two molecules, each having three carbons. One is dihydroxyacetone phosphate and the other is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. And these two molecules are interconvertible. The dihydroxyacetone phosphate later converts into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate in this pathway. The glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate goes further in this pathway of glycolysis. Glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate has one phosphate group and one more phosphate will be added to this molecule. While the NAD plus gets hydrogenated to NADH and the enzyme used here is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. Dehydrogenase enzymes are used in case of hydrogenation or dehydrogenation. The molecule formed is 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. It has two phosphates. Now it will release one phosphate group and that phosphate will be received by ADP to make ATP. And this enzyme is phosphoglycerate kinase. And the molecule formed has only one phosphate group that is in the third carbon. And it will go through a mutase enzyme, phosphoglycerate mutase, 
and the phosphate group will shift from third carbon to second carbon and this molecule is 2-phosphoglycerate. After this, another enzyme will work on it that is enolase and in this process, one molecule of H2O will be released and the remaining molecule will be phosphoenol pyruvate called PEP. And now finally the last phosphate group will be released to form another ATP and the enzyme used here is pyruvate kinase and the final molecule is pyruvate. One molecule of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate has become pyruvate and the other dihydroxy acetone phosphate will now convert into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate by the enzyme triose phosphate isomerase. As glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is an isomer of dihydroxy acetone phosphate. And now the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate will go through the same procedure as before in the glycolysis pathway. And in this, in this process, it will produce one NADH and two ATP molecules. And at the end, it will also produce another pyruvate molecule in the same process as before. Now let's calculate the gain loss and net gain in the process of glycolysis. Two ATPs were consumed in the first phases of the glycolysis. 2 NADH was produced in energy generation phase and 2 ATP from glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and 2 ATP from acetone phosphate so total 4 ATP gain and we got 2 pyruvate from each of the molecules so total ATP gain is 2 ATPs, 2 NADH and 2 pyruvate at the end of the glycolysis. ATPs will go for energy production, NADH will go to the electron transport chain to produce more ATPs and pyruvate will be converted to acetyl-CoA and enter in the Krebs cycle. Now let's do a quick recap of glycolysis pathway. The glucose will go through hexokinase and one phosphate will be added at the sixth position, glucose 6-phosphate and now it will form an isomer that is fructose 6-phosphate and fructose 6-phosphate will add another phosphate group by phosphofructokinase and will become fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Now this 1,6-bisphosphate will be broken down into two molecules having three carbons each. One is dihydroxyacetone phosphate and the other is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and they are interconvertible by isomerase enzyme. Next, the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate will go through another enzyme that is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. Here one phosphate group will be added to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and it will become 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. Now one phosphate group will be added to ADP to form ATP and the enzyme is phosphoglycerate kinase to form 3-phosphoglycerate. Now 3-phosphoglycerate will mutate to 2-phosphoglycerate and the 2-phosphoglycerate will go through another enzyme that is enolase and one molecule of H2O will be released and it will form phosphoenol pyruvate PEP and it will be converted to pyruvate by pyruvate kinase by releasing last phosphate group. Now one ATP was consumed during hexokinase and another during phosphofructokinase activity. The first ATP added phosphate to the glucose molecule and the second ATP added phosphate to the fructose 6-phosphate molecule. One NADH was produced meanwhile the activity of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase and two ATPs were produced one in phosphoglycerate kinase activity and the other in pyruvate kinase activity. The first ATP was produced when 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate released 1-phosphate and the other ATP was produced when phosphoenol pyruvate released 1-another-phosphate. Glycolysis produces two different 
products in case of presence of oxygen and absence of oxygen. In presence of oxygen, glucose consumes 2 ATP, produces 2 NADH and produces 4 ATP in the later phase. And the end result is pyruvate. The NADH produced will go to electron transport chain to form more ATPs and NAD plus is released and that NAD plus is used again to run the glycolysis. But in case of absence of oxygen, the NADH cannot enter the electron transport chain because electron transport chain is oxygen dependent chain of reactions. So to produce the NAD plus again, the pyruvate has to be converted into lactate. During conversion of pyruvate to lactate, NADH is converted to NAD plus and that NAD plus can be used in the glycolysis and the glycolysis can be continued in this way in absence of oxygen. This is it for glycolysis. In the next videos we will talk about Krebs cycle and electron transport chain.